Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Box of the Technical Trader at the TechTrader.com. Let's talk today about it's weekend webinar, by the way, Saturday the uh, 24th. And then for week, we've had an amazing two week rally. SP gone going up about 10% in two and a half, three weeks. A pretty amazing move, I must say. So um, let's start with a look at the SP, which had plunged from 56.44 to 51.19 over 500 points and take it, most of it back just a couple, three weeks later. And now we're challenging the all-time highs at 56, call it 67. And uh, the high this week, 56.43. So just 24 points away um, from testing the all-time high. Now, sometimes we would do this kind of a strong run up to a high with We'll back off for consolidate. So far, for four days, it's consolidated. Now, Thursday was potentially an engulfing reversal day, where there's no downside follow on Friday. But I would watch carefully Thursday's weekly pullback low, I should say, 55.60. That's, um, you know, 74 points from here. So we got a little bit of buffer. And obviously, the high at 56.64, almost 56.67. If we get through that, we're looking at 5,800 potential. This is one strong momentum. You'll see a lot of individual stocks look the same. Uh, you'll see some other surprises. And that's like 100, which hasn't quite done the same, even though it did snap back about a 0.746 Fib retracement. It's gone from 17.435 to 19.938. Uh, so 2,500 points, 2,500 points in just three weeks. Amazing 15% move, uh, about 5% a week, pretty strong move. Now we're at that gap resistance here, about 20,000. 20,080 to be exact. Um, the high this week on Thursday is 19,938. So we got about 80 points short of that gap and backed off a little bit. Going forward next week, the initial support is 19,460. And below that, we have the gap. And 19.240. So those two levels to be watched next week. Pretty strong move, but extended short term. Now you can see they bring broke through the declining top line, moving averages curled up and crossed over. Very bullish sign. Not on the NDX, SP as well. Here's the big one from last week. Very surprising move on Friday in particular. Small caps exploded. The IWM went up 3.43% in one day. Close at 220, 89 up 733, break, breaking across resistance. After filling that gap and stalling, it broke through. Now a run at the all time high is possible, 220, 863. Well, and then the extension target would be about 234.5 if we get there. Pretty amazing move. And look at that. Even with the pullback, a sharp pullback, they help support and bounce quickly. What about transportations? Well, those stocks did well too. Friday was a gain of 1.6%. Uh, well, we have a quadruple top up here in the 16.3 range. We're at 15.970 at the close. Uh, so we have, a, uh, and 16,000 was a high. So we got, a, you know, a bit of work to do to get this one to go through that all-time high area. Oh, excuse me, not all-time high, but multiple top resistance. The all-time high comes in here, 16.717. But overall, a very bullish chart that should we get through here. Look where this thing could be headed. 18 and a half. And possibly 245 in that area with the uh, IWM if we get a blow up. This, be con this could be construed one, two, three, four, five. This is a one, two, and three, and four. The fifth way is underway, but it could explode. This is kind of a very interesting market to say the least. And much more importantly, let's look at some of the underlying technicals. The McClellan oscillator close the plus, excuse me, it's not the daily. There you go. The McClellan oscillator plus 106. Now it's overbought, but not extremely so. When I say overbought, it's in the upper range, not necessarily overbought per se. But there, several times in the past year or two, we peaked in this area and backed off. So we get through here, then it's probably, we're probably looking at 150 and 200 plus, which we guess much more extremely over what we may get there and quickly we'll see 
the percentage of stocks that are participating, meaning above their 40-day moving average. Now, about five out of eight stocks are doing that. And this is a big number because it was down to 25 recently and it jumped to 63. So from a quarter, the five-eighths of all stocks are now above the 40 and running. Again, when we get up in the range where you're plus 75, 85 up there, that's where it becomes an extremely overbought market. If you take that in consideration with the um, oscillator and getting that up towards 200, if they both get up in that range, then we're going to be extremely overbought, but I wouldn't say we are there right now. Okay, I'm um, going to move on to some of the other technicals. The VIX indicator of volatility and a very unusual explosive spike in three days from under 16 almost 66, literally, talk about a spike. Talk about a spike pullback and give it all back, all the way back down to mid-teens. Pretty amazing, you don't see that too often in history. We had that similar pattern here, but this was more shallow or gradual, this was immediate. I don't think I've ever seen that in history where it came down that much that fast. This was a much more gradual pullback. This was immediate. So I don't know what that means, except that there was a spike in, in fear and that dissipated very quickly. Um, and, and so those are the underlying technicals. What I want to do now is take a look at the uh, key indicators that we put, the key components, especially of the NASDAQ 100, because they are mostly components of the SP 500 as well. They don't affect the SP as much. But the app, Apple had the massive spike down in one day. Where it dropped from a close of almost 220 down to 196. For Apple to go down 24 points in one day is almost unheard of. Well, look at the comeback. Now it's right back at resistance or near it. That's the zone of resistance that may be a problem to getting through. I'm anticipating if we don't get the momentum follow through, we could back off to test the moving averages. But for net right now, if Apple gets over 228. It may be on our way up to 236.7, the all-time the all -time high, yeah, the all-time high. Now, if we get through that, this is your multi-year rising channel. That shows the possibility of getting up to about 240. So my target's at two, first around 235 and then 240, but again, the media drop under 223 would be a, a Sign that we may be heading for a bigger um, bid retracement. Amazon, well, it's explosive implosion in, uh, explosion. In literally in two and a half days, Amazon went from 190 to a spike low of 150, 161. Like 38 and a half points, 20% um, drop in Amazon that quickly. Well, with that reversal bar, just like in that case of Apple and most of the others. That was a climax day. Two week rally brings it back up to where the declining top line is, lateral price resistance at the 50 day moving average as well. So there's a juxtaposition of triple resistance there. Now the pullback on Thursday was strong, but Friday bounced. I would say key support now, 174 on Amazon, we're only two points from it. You can get up through 182, we like to see 190.91 to test this triple top up here. <clears throat> Suddenly, Google, which is one of the strongest ones in Wall Street, has gotten awfully weak and come down from the July 10th high, all time high, I believe it was. Well, we'll see. 193 and change imploded to 156.60. And the bounce here has been rather muted, not as strong as the others. So this is a weaker sister. Only if Google gets back over 170 and a half would I look for a move to 176.7. Now though it's a bit dangerous, it might be a bear flag. It could be forming some sort of larger down channel. So I'm not saying short Google by puts, but that's a dangerous looking pattern, especially if the trend line here gets taken out as well. That's one to watch. Microsoft, very similar to Apple and Amazon, big, big rally back up. 
We're spiking down 385. It got up to 426. A 40 point move, move in a couple of weeks. But Thursday was a bad day for Microsoft in particular. That was a negative reversal day. Came right down to resistance, uh, should I say support and bounce. But anything under 412 would be negative for Microsoft that could lead to uh, 398, 400 or less. On the upside, resistance comes in at about 433, 35. Big resistance there. Secondary resistance, 450. If we're going to rally, those are levels to watch for Microsoft. Monster in the midway, NVIDIA, big recovery as well. After having dropped from 136 to 90, 40 points in a one, two, three, four, five wave, eight wave decline, and then did it, has done a one, two, three, four for the fifth wave potential of the retest, the all time highs, or this zone anyway up here where the resistance lies, and 137 to 140 in that area. Nevertheless, we don't want this one under. 2021. Tesla certainly moved up, but again, similar to Google in terms of not as strong. Um, it had a, a you know, nice retracement from 271, spike down when they all did to 182. Uh, we're talking 90 points if, and then a retracement. Uh, yeah, about 46 points, so 50% fib retracement, and, but heavy overhead resistance right now is 233.4. And the support side, you can see Thursday's low is probably the support level of 210, could lead to 190, 395 if it breaks that little platform. We haven't covered Netflix. It's been quite strong, stronger than most. It made a new all time high, believe it or not, at 711 and pull back. It's right on key, key initial support. Um, secondary support, if Netflix comes down further, would be 645.55 in that zone there. And finally, Meta has been pretty weak of late. And well, in the last few sessions, it hasn't kept pace, let's put it that way, not quite weak. Spike pullback and then a run up and a flag. So if we can get Meta up through 544, that would be huge for the market in, in the NASDAQ 100. But keep an eye on key support now about 5, 18, 20. That covers the NASDAQ 100 generals that I follow closely. I want to just throw A and B in there. You can see that rally back as well as above resistance and sitting there. So this one just isn't as strong chart wise as the others are. It is a, a, a component. There's quite a few others. Now let's take a look at some of the major ETS. We follow the SMH, Semiconductor Index, obviously with NVIDIA and some of the other Big ones involved. It's had a nice run. It actually got above the last high, but below the 50. Key, key, key resistance now is 251.2 two zone. We get above that, we're looking at 265 the gap. Anything below Thursday's low here, uh, 241.5. And SMH could lead to 235 ish and 229. But the trend is strong on the blind technicals are it. Uh, semiconductor index. What about financials? Look at that recovery. The FAS actually not only recovered, but it went to a multi-year high. Highest level since 21. So financials leading the way with interest rates about to come down, as you can see. Next target is 128. They're way up here, 147, the all-time high. But for now, beautiful rising channel just near the prior double top. So there, there could be some resistance in that zone. And then finally, biotechs, um, not quite as strong, but they have recovered. They're not above the highs yet. Um, I was relieved to see that this was not a bear flag, or at least not yet. And the uh, nice rising channel in biotechs as well. So let's look at some of the important e, um, major ETS. The other ones we follow are like gold and silver. You can see that the GDX that I follow closely made a new multi year high. At just under 40, that's the highest level of G, GDX in two years. But there is resistance up here after multiple waves up. It's near the top of the channel as well. So this is an area 
key resistance at 4041. Love to see a pullback entry opportunity, but really good momentum there. Not as strong as um, silver is not as strong as gold. Even though I hear projections that in the next move on metals, silver, which should do better percentage wise than it very well might. I'm going to see this get out of here first. There may be a retest as well. I'm still not ex ex super excited in, in silver based on that chart pattern, which is nowhere near this pattern. So the GDX way out distancing, AGQ. You'll see, you'll see some others. I do like Nugget and JNUG um, for trading purposes, but you'll see that Nugget is also right near or right at the double top from April 23. We're a year and a half high there. Is it a base? If it breaks out, sure. You can see this month run to 60, and it may be quite the interesting trade over the next few days and weeks on Nugget. In terms of the natural gas, if you look at Boil, it's a disaster. I mean, it's amazing. It looks like UVX white, isn't it? Natural gas has been so depressed. We caught a nice swing on this one here. Right in that range. You can see it's pulled back. This lower, lower volume pullback uh, might be the V bottom of the right hand extended test. But I would do nothing with boil until I see this down channel blow through with volume. Maybe the ideal scenario would be getting above 970. That should trigger a move towards 11 or better. The other side of the coin is KOLD, the bear ETF for that gas. And boy, is that ripping it. Look at this chart. We have a double top up there, a pullback. But if this is a left shoulder, head and right shoulder, it's could be dangerous. That's why I'm watching this carefully because if they break down on cold and boil breaks out, especially above here, you get above 1093, 1095, because be seeing 12, 14, and 16 on boil. That should be interesting. What about oil? Well, USO, which tracks it, came down pretty hard in the prior two weeks, but Thursday and Friday were good days for it. Nevertheless, the overall structure shows a massive consolidation for the last year. And until it either gets above 82.3 or below 70, um, the jury's still out on the direction of that natural resource. Okay. Um, I also want to go over um, a couple of the ETFs requested by Her Highness Kathy970. Um, TZA and TNA, which is the opposite. This is a small cap index. With the IWM, Kathy, having broken out on Friday, I would not be too keen on a TNA. You can see how it's broken down as a long-term downtrend. TZA is the play, I think. Excuse me, the Met TNA. You can see the TNA broke out as resistance in two places. This spike high here at 51 and then at 54. So those two, that's the two level, that's the target zone for this next move on TNA. In terms of the SQQQ, you can see, and the, and the TQQQ, you can see how the semiconductor is having ra rallied tr tremendously. This has gone all the way from the, the uh, TQQQ, it's gone from 48. 73, 25 points, uh, more than 50%, and it's done it very quickly. Now, if this is a left shoulder here, V bottom, and we create some kind of right shoulder that holds, I think pull back here 65 ish, and then takes out the right range, then we look for a move to at least 85, if not 90, 92. Longer term, intermediate term, sorry. I don't like the underlying technicals as much. My preference, by the way, is SOXL. It's a triple bull, so if it's going to work, it should have more leverage and do better. Look, looking at this one, the goal or target would be 54, with an intermediate target closer to 
48, 46. Uh, 46 and 54 potential targets. Let me look at that one more time. It's 48 and 54, my, my bad. So there and there, going forward, key support short term 37. I like to look at this chart wise, but not technically either. So I'm a little skeptical that this might be a big one two. And if we come down in a long term bear phrase, you might see really negative action this one. So the TQQQ or the SOSX. Sorry. SQQQ, SOXS. I like SOX, SOSX a little better than the TQ and then the SQQQ. Um, for watching this one for move over 24 and a half, that could lead to 30 or even 35. Everything depends how bad the market is or how good it is going forward. Anyway, that's enough time spent on that. Yeah, I hope that covers what you need. Now, we're going to move on to a bunch of stocks that are long and looking beautiful, and I'll cover some shorts for you. Start off at ADMA. Look at this short. It's been in a power move from October, and it was just trading at three. Folks, it's gone sixfold and reached 1842, and it doesn't look done yet, does it? Powerful momentum. Don't know how far they take it. Even at the all time highs, and we're above that. When this stock gets this kind of a move and it comes into all time high territory, the sky's the limit. <laughs> Excuse me. You always must remember it's extremely vulnerable to profit taking at any time. And, and even like, like it was here, that could happen quickly. This could go to 18 to 14 in, in a flash. It could also spike up and blow into the low 20s. Up next, AEM in the gold sector. This is one of the major goals. Big base, it's a one, two the three, four, and the fifth wave is underway. Or it might be um, that this is one, two, and this is one, two, three of three. You could see four and five, and then a bigger consolidation before a fifth wave. So eventually, $100. Junior gold, AGI, that's Alamos gold. Beautiful trend. I want to show you this because it's stronger than most golds. And in terms of all-time highs, it's up against that range going back 14 years. So we'll see, but it's had a big run. And if gold goes and this gets through that zone, who knows where they can take that. Um, and if biotech group, Amniel AMRX, has gone from a buck and a quarter March of 23, it's a year and a half ago, about 25 to over eight, now 840. My trend analysis tells me it's headed to 11. Apps. One of our tech trader swings. One of the big winners we ever had. It literally went from three to over 100. Um, and then went way back down and returned to sender, believe it or not, for $1.39. So from 139, it popped, pulled back, and then exploded. And it's tripled to 462. Um, but this breakout and rising channel tells me we go higher. I'm looking for five and three quarters to seven. In the gold sector, AU, my favorite gold, if not one of two or three favorite golds. Base breakout, and now you can see the stair step move up. Every time it hits the channel, it pops to the top and backs off. It's at the top of the channel. Um, it is a multi-year high going back to 20. That spike high got us up to 30. Something. So it may see that extension take up to 36.7. But be careful on this one. Make sure you have stops in place under 29 there about. ABXL. Biotech had a nice move, now a long downtrend. Um, broke out recently and has a beautiful coil. I'm showing it to you because it's the apex of a coil that calls for about a four point move from the pullback low, which is right there. We're looking at nine and three quarters folks up here. So this might be a nice swing. Keep an eye on AVXL. AZN, that's AstraZeneca. Look at this chart. I haven't seen that again until this week when it blew out of that flag and kept going. Target, 95. BCRX. Um, Biochrist, I believe, is a vaccine stock, but in any case, it's pharmaceuticals. V bottom, pop, coil, breakout, retest, pop, the rising flag. Target, nine. 
by Aventus. It's something new I've been watching, but it wasn't on my list usually until this week when I added it. And here's why I added it. I think we could be headed, if we can get through this zone, to about the mid-teams. Kaba, Monster, literally had a base back less than a year ago and broke out in December around 38, and it's gone nonstop into a low mid-120s. Big day Friday when it jumped 20 points or 20%. Uh, the biggest volume I've ever seen, 22 and a half million on a very strong range report. CDMA, this beautiful inverse head and shoulder breakaway gap and coil led me to give you a swing. It's gone from the low teens to the low 30s and nearly triple to 34 and change. My target is 40. Beautiful chart. Colgate Pomalab is one of those blue chip stocks along with Unilever and Philip Mars. I've just done phenomenal since October of last year. In a rising channel and a sweet looking technical pattern. No reason to assume it can't go higher. The ultimate target is 120, we'll see. Cellbrite breaks out of a base, retests, and then steps up this way higher with a beautiful rising 45 degree angle, but it is at the top of the channel. Now, unless it gets a blowout, blow off type top, which it might, because it's new all-time high territory. Um, if it does that, we may see low 20s. CLPT breaks out of a base. After popping to it, resistance and coming back and blew through it, with this one big day right there, it's all go from 9.31 to 9, 7.31 to 9.06, and then extending. Now, it's a thin stock. doesn't trade a lot, but boy, a really nice chart. Eventual target, 17 and a half, 18. CMPO breaks out of the base and goes vertical, now in a rising flag. Very strong chart. Major breakaway gap there with volume. New all-time highs. It might be extended, as this looks like an angle of ascent right there, and so does this. Now, if that's the case, we may see a period of digestion, but ultimately, it could be 14. Core is one of my previous swings. It's had a couple hard down moves, but boy, each time it recovered. Look at this recovery. If the market spiked down a couple, three weeks ago, this one dropped to 52 and recovered to 80. That the recent high was 80.93 uh, two months ago, and yesterday's high was 81. So we're right there. If we broke through here, it's a $98 stock, in my opinion. COM, inverse head and shoulders, a rounding bottom, breakout. Stair stepping its way higher, though it's had a one, two, three, four, five way move. It's flagging. If it extends six and a half to the target, if it pulls back, it wouldn't shock me. It may need to consolidate. Credo, beautiful long term chart as well. Recent pullback was steep, but look at the recovery to new highs, all time highs. And now maybe we see this in the low to mid 40s. CRNT, one of my junior growth, growth, little growth uh, tech stocks, beautiful base breakout and retest, pop and another retest, and then pop. And this is the breakout Friday in particular, back above three, closing at 308 up, up only a dime. But I like to look at this for a move to 335 to test the old high, and then four and a quarter, four and a half. Is my target. Kinetics breakaway gap and a huge one in September last year has triggered a massive move from 25 to 55 with a target now of 60 and 70. Criteo, similar breakaway gap, little wedge, stair step your way higher, form a consolidation, breakout, retest, wedge, boom. My target, 55. C1, that's Clearwater Analytics. And breaking out and, and hit it, I think, from mid to high 20s. Good chart. Nice reversal day Friday. Vectronics, beautiful chart. Beautiful. So, two years ago, it had a spike down and then recovered. Then it had a falling wedge. Since then, it's nothing but up. My target is 25. DOCS popped out of a base. It has a really nice ascending bull wedge near resistance. If this gets up through, 37 and a quarter, we might see 42 and 46. Dole, the food, food purveyor, break out, pull back, retest, and then spike up. Something's brewing there, maybe a takeover. DRS, an aerospace group, there's a lot of good ones. So Leonardo DRS has literally gone from its pullback after the IPO under 10 to near 30. It's tripled. The recent high was 29 and change. Friday was an exceptional day. They had a reversal, engulfing reversal day. 
So I'm looking for more upside in the low 30s. DYN, Dying Therapeutics, beautiful rising channel continues. It's one of those stocks that's literally gone from five or six into the 40s, but I would not be shocked to see at least mid 50s and perhaps high 60s. EBS, breakaway gap, rising pattern, and a sharp one right there. It finally broke hard, but it held support and rebounded. With this little wedge forming, if it breaks out of it to the upside, we might see 14, 15 and higher. Be careful though on any break to the downside. Ehang, a new tech trader swing after forming a little mini inverse head and shoulders. It broke out with a breakaway gap Thursday, followed through Friday, got up to the recent high in July on 1549 was a high Friday's high with 1583. So a nominal new high, slightly pull back though. My targets are 17 and a half and 20. ERJ, uh, the South American aircraft manufacturer, breaks out of a base, breaks through secondary resistance, just keeps stair stepping its way higher. I got a target of 42.3, folks. Evalent Health, breakaway gap, rising wedge, explosive move right near resistance, targeting 36.7. If it gets to that, it's a boom chakalaka. It's overbought, but it's got great momo. <clears throat> Swing FAIM broke out and pulled back. We put a swing on it. it. Had a deeper retrace than I wanted to see. However, that did hold support right near the prior highs. What a nice bounce back. On Friday, they reversed it after making a new high. I can't tell where it goes, but my target's 16 and a half. Forward air, long downtrend, breakout coil. Pops the coil, goes up to the channel top, pulls back and tests it again. And now we're back up again. If we can get through here, we've got a chance of running this one to a high 30, 40. Junior Mexican silver stock Gato. Gato Silver. That's rising channel. Targeting 19. GDS exploding in the last week and a half. Literally went from under 10 to 17 plus. And it's at the top of the channel and overbought, but great momentum. Gone through multiple resistance levels. My ultimate target is 20 and a half, three quarters. Barrick Gold is another gold stock I like a lot. I always have right at key resistance here. You get through that, you might see low and mid 20s. GOVX, explosive moves. I mean, if, can you go from 160 to 1118 in a week and then pull back? Yeah, there's a wedge forming and it may have momentum. To to the mid teens, but you got to be careful not letting this get under five, five and a quarter. GVA, granite construction, one of the larger ones in the country, is really had a phenomenal chart and still looks good. I'll tell you this the all time high is near right here. So if we get through that, it might be in the, uh, this could very well be a hundred dollar stock, folks. Halozyme breaks out of a base with a breakaway gap and then a wedge. Typical, it stair steps its way higher. Now it's gone through the recent, recent highs. Actually, all time highs now, with the channel telling me that the possibilities are it's going to be an $80 stock. 80. Arrow is a tech trader swing that we did very well with here, and then cut hammered, came back, broke out again. We put another swing on it around 15, it ran into the 40s. Is that the channel top? I suggest taking profits up here. INOD breaks back out with a breakaway gap and steps up this way higher. Now forming a wedge. You can pop that wedge and get through 22. You might see 25, even 30. Insmed with a massive breakaway gap and a subsequent rising channel. And now I'm targeting 90, 95. Iobance broke out with a breakaway gap and put a swing on it. It formed a little wedgy and kept going. Not quite at my target of 13, secondary target 14 and a half, and then 16. LITE broke out with a gap and pulled back. We have a swing on this one from the low 50s. It popped Friday from the 59 plus up to 358. It's about to retest the July high, which was 60 40. But more importantly, there's two or three tops up there. We get through this path. It's skitty bar the door. First target 68. Second target 75. Layers Superfoods. Keep an eye on this one next week, folks. It looks ready. 
the big one, two, let me call this one and that two, and this is three and four. Even though it had that pop here, I think the overall pattern here is wave two. One, two, three, and four. Fifth wave, I know it looks amazing, but if it breaks down underneath 350, obviously you're out. If it breaks out above 470, I want you to go long for a move that takes it to six and a half and nine. This could be a double. LTH, beautiful chart, breakaway gap, long-term rising channel. In particular, on Friday, it popped out of a wedge or coil, jumping $1.93 or 8%. More importantly, it's a breakout. It's a breakout to new all-time highs. At this point, I would venture a guess, based on my technical experience, that we could follow through to 27.8. LUMN, monster move, literally from 1 to 8. But an explosive move, two day pullback, explosive move, four day pullback, and now a wedge. Friday looked like it was going to break out. It didn't get enough volume, but I think this is a $10 stock. Lunar popped and broke out and pulled back. We've, we've got a current swing on it. Really need to get it above that spike high above 612. Then I'm looking at seven and a half and nine. 3M with a breakaway gap, a little wedge, and now it's moving to new highs. It's above 130, folks. I originally gave you this one here when it broke out. I believe it was in the low 90s. So it's up about 35 points and looking great. I'm going to change the angle. This is what it looks like now. So if it continues this angle, we should see 138 to 40. Breakout on Friday on MREO after months of consolidation, breakaway move. Long term chart is impeccable. I, my target is now six and a half and nine. Newmont Mining, one of the major goals, broke out. Look at that rising channel. Looks like a big one, two, three. And then if we get a fourth or fifth, eventually 60 is a target. Neon breaks out of a base on Wednesday, stalls Thursday and Friday. So let's get this one to look for it to get above five and a half in energy. If it does that, probably looking at seven and eight. Solar stocks are moving again. Look at Nova, N-O-V-A. This is a eight or nine month high. I'm looking for an extension to 13 and 16. NRIX, a beautiful junior uh, biotech has gone literally from four to 24, six fold increase. And it's just breaking out. If it gets above here, targeting 29 and 35, maybe even as high as 37. Good looking chart. ONON is a tech trader swing. Love the long term chart. It's a little choppy, but of late, it's breaking out. It looks like it's going to run into the $50 range. On two. V bottom, explosive move and a flag. Now, looking for a retest of 235. OPRA, breakaway gap, in inverse head and shoulders, right hand extended. Cup and hail, whatever you want to call it, there's the breakout. There's a secondary move. And we have a double top to consider 17 and a half. You get through that. I'm looking at 22 and 25. That looks really good. PAYO, this is a tech trader swing. It broke out. It's got a flag. Target eight. PBI, this little junior stock, Pitney Bowes old line company. Breaks out of a base and flags, pops and retests, and pops again and forming a little flag. Target is nine. PHAT, um, Phantom Pharmaceuticals, coming through resistance to the highest level since last September, almost a 52 week high. Now I'm looking for a test of this area at 17. That's my next target. Philip Morris was the other one we talked about, the Unilever, Philip Morris, and um, Colgate, very strong looking blue chip type stocks, breaking out of the base. It's a one, two, three. Looks like it's got such strong momentum. We may see 125 short, 130, excuse me, short term, 230. Poet, a little junior semiconductor with a pop pullback, only wedge pop, another one. Now it's popped and got a mini wedge. My targets are four, six, and seven and three quarters. Pay safe, beautiful rising channel with a target of 24. Juxtaposition of resistance up there. If it takes this out and it does look like a V bottom with a little platform, 
the nice thing about being reversed there Friday. Right there's potential for it. Really good chart. Personalis, beautiful base, breakaway wedge. I showed you this two weeks ago and I said this could be a swing. Well, let's climb from three to seven, folks. Let's flag it again. Stuff is up here, it looks great. My target is seven and a half and eight and a half. Rail, another favorite of Kathy's, breaks out. It goes vertical. Once it got to four and a quarter, it, it's gone up 50%. My target is 680.85. Red Cat, breaking out of the base, wedged and popped. Extension target is four. Red Fit, breaks out of a base, spikes up in the last two weeks. Three weeks, it's gone from about six and a quarter to 1166, almost doubling. So it's a bit extended. And there is a gap right here. Watch for that resistance at about 12 and a half. Refront, uh, Research Frontiers REFR, beautiful one, two, three, four, five way move. And then this is a one, two, and a breakout. If we get through here, it's right there. Looking for a retest of that double top to 85 and four are your following targets. Rev Group, REVG, look at this rising channel. Outstanding chart. Long term, very, very nice. There's a resistance level just above here, um, but my target's 38. Rocket Labs, it's exploded last week, now wedging. As long as it doesn't get below 620, I'm looking for eight. And Rocket Companies, the mortgage company, Breaks out last week and keeps running. Follow through target, 23 and a half. RNA has been a tech trader swing since back in October when it was literally $6. It is one of my biggest winners of the year, having gone from six to 48. How about that? Eight fold increase, folks, in the last 10 months. Currently wedging. Now, I wouldn't be a seller until I see if they can break this wedge to the upside or stop on the 40. But where can this go? Mid 50s. Revolution Med, beautiful chart, spiked down last October, reaching down to 15 and a half, and then here it is, up to 50, and now pulling back and consolidating. Target 57.8. Sentinel one is a texture to swing, it broke out, it pulled back and then exploded. I'm looking for a move 27, 29, and 31. CRV, as you all know, the stock went bonkers, it literally went from two to 25, a 10 fold increase in a week and a half. Ever since then, this is what it's doing very quiet, narrow apex with good technicals. The reason I'm showing it to you is because if it popped, it could be vicious. It's the way the stock goes. Wouldn't be shocked to see 14 and 17 on this one. SG Sweet Greens with a good report. After breaking out and popping, it's now looks like it wants to extend with a target of 47 and 54. SLQT, a tech trade swing and a rising channel. I got a target at six. The near term resistance is 430. SMMT exploded in May, pulled back and coiled, and now it's still stepping higher. This is um, highest level we've seen. In six years, I suspect we may make a run at near 16. My target is 15 and a half. And so I would explosive move and a pullback, hold support on Friday and reverse. 13 and a half, 14 three quarters, and 16 in targets. So ND, a massive move. 88 cents, I kid you not, to 770. We're looking at nine fold increase, nine fold. In two weeks. So it's holding up pretty well, but it's vulnerable. If it gets through, and you got to watch for a move over 770, it may go vertical to eight or nine or maybe 10. Spry, breaks to a double top. We put a swing on it and then ran and pulled back. It's a buy and it's pullback, in my opinion. We moved to 18 and a half. The TEM, a recent IPO in the AI group. And boy, what a chart. First it took a dip, then it ripped and pulled back, and then this is the explosive part. We have a one, two, three. If I see four, even if any kind of setup, even if it's a shallower, shorter one, 
I'm thinking this stock has potential to be 90 to 100. No kidding. Teva, look at this chart. One, two, three, four, I'm breaking out in the fifth wave. I got targets in mid, low 20s and mid 20s. TGTX popped, we put a swing on it. It's got a five day flag. This is going, ah, yeah. 28 and 35 are targets. PKNO, what an explosive move and rising wedge, and then boom, now flag. I just, the momentum is amazing on this move. Looking for six and a half. Track, what a great chart. This one based here, broke out and wedged, ran up sharply and flagged along one, two, three, four with the fifth wave underway in wave one and two. Wave three, four, and five gets me in the mid 20s. Tupanion breaks out of a base in the last week, week and a half. It's on its way higher. And the first target was 50, second target 60. Uber, been in a great long term channel, came down with the tech stocks, but went a reversal right back up to the highs. We get through here, we're looking at 80 and above. UL, that's Unilever, one of the other blue chips we mentioned earlier, along with Colgate and Philip Morris. Great chart. Breakaway gap out of a base and a strong run up. Target 66. ULS recent IPO has gone from 34 to 56, and it doesn't look done yet. Last week I pointed out that wedge being a very bullish one, I'm sure enough went higher, but it's extended. BERX, beautiful rising channel, bounced off support and spiked up on Friday. Resistance and target is 40 and then 44. The IRC, Verco, Pop wedge, pop long coil, pop breakout, retest. It's going higher to 21. The ISL, I like the base, the breakout, the retest, the spike up and wedge. Keep an eye on this wedge because if it goes, eight and 10 are your targets going forward. This is what I'm interested in. VRAX, boom chagalaka. Literally goes from 140 in a day and a half to nine. And it pulls back sharply and bounces sharply. If this gets above six and three quarters, the targets are nine and a half, 13. Wow. Keep, be careful with that though. VRNA is a tech trader swing, broke out, retested, popped, now it's flagging. I think we're going to 35. Nice chart. Veronis stair stepped its way higher in a one, two, three, four, five way move, then filled the gap with a big pullback. However, since then it's recovered sharply made a nominal new high. The channel long-term says this could be 70. Visto Outdoor has gone from 23, nearly double to 41. Our target is 43, 44. WGS Tech Trader Swing broke out. We put a swing on it and kept going. It's gone from 11, 12 zone into the mid 30s. I don't think it's done yet. I got a target of 40. Zeta Global, one of our better swings this year as well. Pop breakout, consolidate, and then run from 11 to 25, about 140%. It looks like to me a long one, two, three, four, and the fifth wave spike could get this to 30 or better. And sit on the longs. We've got some shorts to show you, and that'll be it for today. BPMC, anytime you see multiple waves up and a crack. Followed by this kind of a bear wedge, Blueprint Medicine is a prime short candidate. Now, obviously, it's an easy one, too. Because anything over 96.7 would be a stop for me. But anything down now, 83 and 73 are targets. BRBR, Bell Brand Foods, broke the head and shoulder top or topping pattern, and now it's from the rising wedge right to the neckline resistance. If it rolls over and you want to wait for it, it could drop hard into the high 40s or less. CMG split 10 for 1. Crazy stuff. Came down and bounced. You can see the double bottom and attempted a base. Lousy technicals. I don't think it's done yet going down. We'll see. Depends on the market, of course. But I would cover over 57. And anything under 51 and a half, I'd be encouraged to watch it go to 48, 44. Disney remains negative, although it has bounced back to the channel top. Probably overdone because this stock has gone literally from 124 to 84. 
and you know, and multiple waves down. So don't be surprised if it rallies back into the mid 90s, but be careful because if it fails here, it can roll over and be 80. FCX, um, this is the copper stock with a head and shoulder top and a breakdown and rally back up to resistance. If it, look, it had a good day Friday, so if copper recovers, this is going to spike up. It would cover over 46 and a half, but a roll over here below 43 gets you um, down, I think, into the high 30s to the mid 30s. Form factor, long rising channel, roll over and a spike right back up. This is a semiconductor. So, you know, obviously it had a big recovery, but it's right of resistance. It looks through here, it's a cover. If it rolls over and takes out 48, you might see it retest the low 40s, high 30s. Hubs, expensive stock, got a head and shoulder top, big breakdown in a wedge. I don't know about you folks, but if this goes lower, you still see 415.20, you might see 370.75. INFA has been in a downtrend since the long uptrend got crushed with that one bar. To me, it's a one, two, three, four. The fifth wave is coming down to 20. In mode, we've been short this stock since it broke here. It's been nothing but lower since then. I don't know how far they take it, but it's not pretty. My chart tells me and we're looking for 11. JBL, that looks like a head and shoulder type top or at least a topping pattern where it broke the channel right there. Rally back to it. Failed right at the gap resistance and broke down again. Now this rising pattern here tells me it isn't done yet. My target is 90, it's 108 now. MDB, head and shoulder type top at this bear wedge followed by this consolidation is a one, two, three, four. Obviously, it breaks the double bottom at 210. You're headed down to 180 or less. Packard, well, to me, it's still in a downtrend despite this run up. I think it was earnings related. They crushed it. And now, this bear flag tells me we go lower 88 and 81 targets. Believe it or not, Qualcomm, as good as that tech stocks look, this does not look that good for some reason. Hidden shoulder top with big volume on the downside off the high. That bear flag there, a lower volume. Breaks down and now another bear flag on low volume. I don't know about you guys, but it looks like a one, two, three, four. Fifth wave takes me to 140. That's 33 points. Uh, Schwab, well, it's a long uptrend. Breaks here, forms this big wedge. If they crack this one, we we'll probably hit the 55. <laughs> um, <coughs> This is IG, I hate this stock, I hate this chart, I hate everything about it, uh, I hate the company, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> breakdown bear flag, breakdown bear flag, another one, look at this rising bear flag. I think we're headed to 67.8 or 80. WDC breaks down and snaps back. There's another tech stock back to resistance. If it goes, you cover. If it doesn't and rolls over, you might see 54, you could see 45. William Sonoma, is this the top? It might be, but Friday was a nice snapback. Be careful. If it breaks down on the 129, it's good to go short. Lastly, Yelp, forming yet another bear flag in here. A nasty downtrend for almost a year. Uh, with the target now, I'd have to say, get 30. Whew, that's an exhausting look at uh, the loans, the shorts, all the technicals, and the indices, the leading ETFs that we follow closely. You should have a good idea where we're headed. Right now, the market's extended to resistance, but if it blows through here, it's Katie bore the door as the shorts get crushed. On the other hand, if they roll over from here, we could see a nasty little pullback. That's where we stand. This is HB out. Have yourself a great rest of your weekend. Love you guys, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.